groups meant to bring peace are running the scams that start war. Coming up. NGOs accused of the hoaxes pushing Ukraine to war. Former Amnesty board member warns all human rights groups have been infiltrated. And CNN buys the latest State Department scam. This viral video, hyped by the mainstream, is the latest exposed as a State Department hoax, the opposite of the stated, quote, grassroots expression by Ukrainians. It's actually by a California firm and produced by a man called Larry Diamond of the U.S. State Department and its NGO, the National Endowment for Democracy. The video's designed notes activist post to con the public to back more foreign intervention by associating Ukraine's shockingly violent coup with some peaceful, fragrant girl called Julia instead of Nazi insurgents who've murdered their way to power or Assistant State Secretary Vic Newland caught revealing she'd plotted this coup against the elected government long before the protests started. Investigative reporter Paul Joseph Watson notes CNN's Anderson Cooper for some reasons often the point man for these State Department hoaxes. Paul joins us. Great to speak to you. What's going on? So you can look at the example of Anderson Cooper. He sold the Coney 2012 scam, which was similar to this I am a Ukrainian scam. And he quickly had to abandon that once it became obvious that that was a, a contrived agenda to justify US military intervention in Africa. And then, even after that, he sold the Syria Danny scam, which was this situation involving a, a quote, Syrian activist who was, in fact, staging YouTube videos to blame atrocities on the Assad regime as a means of discrediting, demonizing the Syrian government and justifying US military intervention. And what's interesting is the mainstream media interviews of Yulia that have occurred over the past couple of weeks credit her with being the creator of the video, when in fact it was created by a production company linked directly to the US State Department. So the key man behind the video, according to the production company itself, was Larry Diamond. Larry Diamond's National Endowment for Democracy is funding at least dozens of Ukrainian groups they simply dub, quote, pro-democracy and human rights. In fact, these groups' websites call for assassination of political opponents. As one headline reads, he needs to be killed. Rioters have been handed out these instructions by a State Department-funded NGO called Canvas. Canvas made identical flyers in Arabic for US-backed protests in Egypt. In fact, instructions with the NGO's FIST logo have been distributed wherever countries resist takeover by Wall Street. They are going in every place since the end of the Cold War to destabilize regimes which offer resistance to this larger agenda, the globalization agenda, as Washington defines it. NGOs pay protesters $35 to turn up, notes the Foreign Policy Journal, rising to hundreds for violence. This protest organizer admitted how much US NGOs paid him and their real target. One million bucks. One million dollars? Yeah. In some smaller country like Belarus, for instance, or Ukraine, and then we can get Russia. We've invested over five billion dollars to assist Ukraine in these and other goals. They're doing so peacefully, with great courage, and with enormous personal restraint. As they sang hymns and prayed for peace, as we take Ukraine into the future that it deserves. This future it deserves, reports European Tribune, was arranged even before protests started. Leaked images show NATO teaching Ukraine's neo-Nazi gangs, here wearing a Nazi hat, quote, terrorism and subversion, how to use radio-controlled mines, sniper rifles in civilian areas, and spreading human rights and democracy. When they seized power last week, they began spraying swastikas and defacing synagogues with the words death to the Jews, but using a more offensive word than Jews. The book Ideal Illusions, how the US government co-opted human rights, found a State Department meeting chose the terms human rights and democracy as its perfect foil. Such broad terms could justify attacking anyone, while Hollywood and media paint US 
as the model, despite by far the world's largest prison population and far and away the world's most appalling war crimes, including the murder of millions in Iraq. Real or invented offences in target nations would be presented as symptomatic and requiring regime change, whereas far worse American violations are just, quote, mistakes. In fact, the very term human rights group, notes the site Global Research, couldn't be more false. Each US bombing campaign is not just supported by NGOs, they have been the very instigators of the scams that push decision makers to destroy human rights and human lives around the world. Over 70 leading NGOs claimed Gaddafi murdered 6,000 in Benghazi, the claim on which the UN approved intervention. After the war, where NATO killed even more people than the claimed attack, NGOs admitted it wasn't true. One of those signatories was Human Rights Watch, which told Obama to continue rendition, the practice of flying people to third-party states to strip them of rights. The group claims the UN blamed the Ghouta chemical attack on Syria's government. It was not even in the UN mandate to apport blame, and also regrets the US hasn't bombed Damascus on the grounds that it fails to ensure justice. Justice for Human Rights Watch notes Ron Paul Institute's Daniel McAdams means NATO killing far more people than even the alleged attack. Daniel joins us. Great to see you. Why are human rights groups behaving like this? Well, you know what? Human Rights Watch is kind of a pseudo-private intelligence agency. Uh, they often have people on the ground first, uh, and they are able to dominate the media coverage of an event. Uh, they can inflate figures, they can deflate figures, depending on the position of U.S. foreign policy. This uh, human rights organization uh, that started, that's, that issued a report about uh, Gaddafi was using jet planes to kill people and he had killed 6,000. It was repeated the same way as gospel, as gospel. And then a very, a very good French filmmaker named Julien Thiel made a film where he interviewed the individual who was responsible for writing that report, a Libyan citizen, and they asked him, well, where was the proof for your, for your assertions? And he, he just looked at the camera and said, there is no proof. There is no proof. What can I tell you? There is none. In what human rights investigations called a scandal of the first order, the state official who took NGO's Libyan hoax to the UN was rewarded with the chair of Amnesty USA. Suzanne Nussel promptly made one of Amnesty's big four campaigns a celebration of NATO bombing Afghanistan with the catchphrase, NATO keeps the progress going. Twelve years of Afghan war has been a disaster. The UN's relief chief warns increasingly men and women can't even feed themselves, let alone any other rights. Political activist Eric Dreitzer joins us. Great to speak to you. What's going on? Look at some of America's wars to understand the way in which Amnesty International functions as a propaganda mouthpiece. If you look at the Amnesty International campaign with regard to Afghanistan, what do they put front and center? The rights of women. By putting it out there in that fashion, they are acting to sell the war, the continued occupation of Afghanistan to the American people, using the face of young Afghan women to justify what is a nakedly imperial war. This is the sad truth of what Amnesty International does, that Amnesty International, like the other NGOs, act as an appendage of the United States foreign policy. They act as an appendage of finance capital. Congress authorized the first Gulf War by just five votes. Four of those members said they backed it due to an amnesty report rushed through just before that claimed Iraq soldiers were pulling babies off life support machines. Once war had been approved, amnesty admitted it was a lie. The resulting invasion was a, quote, indiscriminate massacre of hundreds of thousands of civilians and soldiers, including a four-hour slaughter of thousands of defenseless fleeing people one U.S. pilot admitted was like shooting fish in a barrel. Amnesty board member Francis Boyle resigned after hitting a wall of silence on any approach to U.S., British or Israeli war crimes. He joins us now. Great to see you. Can you give us a view from inside the organization? Uh, I was involved in trying to prevent the, uh, their publication of that dead babies report uh, on Iraq that was so uh, warmongering. Uh, I couldn't do it. Certainly, uh, 
amnesty it works as uh, an adjunct to the uh, State Department, the International Committee of the Red Cross, which tries to make it appear as if they're the uh, high holy priesthood of uh, human rights movements. The uh, ex-CIA agent uh, Ralph McGee, he established they were penetrated by uh, the CIA. Uh, I myself uh, found them uh, 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 ferrying uh, guerrillas uh, in then uh, South Sudan to work the against the uh, government of Sudan. I sent them a day march. They never uh, bothered to respond. Likewise, uh, Medicine Sans Frontier, uh, again, Ralph McGee, uh, uh, proving that they were pen penetrated by uh, uh, French intelligence agents. So I, I think it's fair to say that's true for, uh, for all of them. Yes, yeah, so what can nations do when they're targeted by these NGOs? They should be expelled, yes, because they're, they're basically an arm of the United States government. So Ned should be expelled, and the uh, Republican Institute, which is uh, also the Republican Party, they should be expelled, too. You, you can't have agents of foreign governments uh, running around promoting coup d'etats and things of that nature. And the same with USAID. They, they should be thrown out, too. We would never tolerate that here in the United States, except when it comes to the uh, Israel lobby. When the State Department came up with its plan for human rights NGOs in the 80s, historian James Peck notes the idea was they'd occasionally offer some toothless criticism of U.S. policy so the public would think they're fair. Today, they've given up any pretense of balance, cheering on violent neo-Nazis in Ukraine while simply fabricating lies and false provocations against U.S. targets. If history is any guide, NGOs will do everything to turn Ukraine into international war. When the organizations tasked with preventing conflict are the ones provoking it, the world is in a dangerous place. Seek truth from facts. This is The Truth Seeker.